two teams, one game to decide who plays for the national title, and two completely different narratives. One of these teams was expected to get here, and expected is a light word. They needed to get here, and if they didn't, they would be labeled a failure. The other team is having a dream Cinderella of a lifetime, reminiscent of their 1983 squad, and no one expected them to get to this point, including some of their own fans, but against all odds, they did it. It's shaping up to be David versus Goliath, America's darlings versus the villains? It's number 11 seeded NC State versus number one seeded Purdue for all the glory. And I'm here to tell the entire story. Real quick, if you enjoy this kind of content, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, and let's get started. So we'll start with the Purdue Boilermakers first because I know a lot of you want to hear about NC State. You want to hear about DJ Burns. But remember, your mom said eat your veggies before you eat the ice cream. So we're going to do the Boilermakers first. Purdue is not your average run-of-the-mill number one seed in 2024. They are the hungriest team in America because of what happened last year in the 2023 NCAA tournament. Purdue has a fantastic basketball program and it was no surprise that in the 2023 season they were a number one seed in the NCAA tournament but unfortunately they became the second team ever to lose to a 16 seed in the first round and the 16 seed Fairleigh Dickinson didn't even win their conference tournament. They were undersized. It was one of the greatest upsets of all time. That could be a blessing because it could get the players right like it did for Virginia when Virginia lost in 2018 to UMBC. They came out the next year in 2019, proved everyone wrong, and won the national championship. Or it could be too much pressure and they could crumble. But so far, Purdue has looked exceptional all season and they could be on track to do exactly what Virginia did. Purdue came into the season ranked number three in the AP poll, and they started off the season red hot, winning the first seven games, including going to the Maui Invitational and knocking off three top 15 seeds, Gonzaga, Tennessee, and Marquette. Before the Big Ten tournament, they only had three losses on the year. Unfortunately, they were all to unranked teams at Ohio State, at Nebraska, and at Northwestern, but at home, they were a perfect undefeated. They finished 17-3 and in conference with the number one overall seed for the Big Ten tournament. They had a bye to the quarterfinals where they beat Michigan State, a team who also made the tournament, but they actually lost in the semis to Wisconsin, which was very surprising, but everyone knew not to panic. They had bigger fish to fry in March. During this great regular season, they were led by monster 7'4 center Zach Eady, who returned for his senior year, averaging 25 points a game, 12.2 rebounds, and 2.2 blocks. And guys, don't forget about Braden Smith's sophomore guard. He is the floor general, 7.5 assists. That's fourth in the country. This was a very dangerous team. In the first round, they played against number 16, Grambling State, and some people had some worry, but they left no doubt when they won the game 78 to 50 by 28 points. Then in the second round, they faced a number eight seeded Utah State, who was a great team all season out of the Mountain West, and they ran them out of the building 106 to 67, which was one of the biggest blowouts in round of 32 history. Moving to the Sweet 16, they faced number five Gonzaga, and this Gonzaga team was not as talented as they usually are, but of course, they're very well coached. This is one of the top programs in college basketball, and they won no problem by 12 points. It was all chalk in the Midwest Elite Eight, number one seeded Purdue and number two seeded Tennessee. This was Purdue's closest matchup yet, their biggest scare, but they won 72 to 66 behind 40 points and 16 rebounds by Zach Eady. Oh my gosh, this guy is a monster. Okay, Purdue, we get it. You are a super talented team. You could beat a lot of great teams, but can you beat the team that is red hot? In 2023, NC State came off an NCAA tournament appearance only as an 11 seed where they lost in the first round. But even before the 2024 season started at the jump, no one really expected them to get back. They were predicted to finish 7th in the ACC preseason media poll. The reason for that prediction was because of the pure uncertainty their top three players in scoring, rebounding, and assisting were all transfers from different schools, including DJ Horn, Muhammad Diara, and Michael O'Connell. So I understand why people weren't very high on this team, but they lived up to that expectation pretty much all year. They were a middle-of-the-road ACC team in late February. They were 17-10 with a 9-7 conference record. They just won against Boston College, but little did Wolfpack fans know this would be their last win of the regular season. They finished on a horrible four-game stretch, losing to Florida State, North Carolina, Duke, 
and Pittsburgh to end 17 and 14 and 9 and 11, an under 500 record in conference and a 10th seed. Yeah, since they were a low seed, they didn't get the first buy. They didn't get the second day buy. They had to play in the first round on March 12th against a 15 seeded Louisville. Against all odds, they played five games in five days and won them all a game against Louisville. Win against Syracuse, win against Duke, win against Virginia, and then in the championship of the ACC against their rivals, North Carolina, number four in the country, they won the game by eight points. Out of absolutely nowhere, they won the ACC tournament and they would be getting an automatic bid to the big dance. While NC State was getting all the media attention, the press, the coverage, there was one player in particular who was heating up and was starting to stand out. His name was DJ Burns Jr. He had played his first three years in college for Winthrop, transferred over in 2023 to NC State in his first year, and this is his senior season with the Wolfpack. He only averaged 13 a game, but he started turning up when it really mattered most, including a 19-point performance against Virginia in the semifinals and a 20-point performance against North Carolina in the championship game. He started to capture America's heart, not just because of his play, but because of his enthusiasm on the court and his just sheer size. He's 6'9", 275. He's a beast. He backs people down. He's super fun to watch. NC State was an 11 seed in the South region entering the field, and their first game would be a challenge against a number six Texas Tech, a very deep team out of the Big 12, but no problem. They beat them by 13. In their second game, they ran up against another Cinderella team, 14 seeded Oakland, who had just beat Kentucky in the round previous. It went to overtime. It was a great game, but they won 79-73, led by a team-high 24 points by Burns Jr. DJ was so fun to watch on the court and so loved by America. He signed NIL deals with Adidas, CVS, Manscaped, Raising Canes, and TurboTax during the tournament. In the Sweet 16, they faced number two seeded Marquette, and a lot of times, this is where these fun Cinderella teams end their story, but no chance they won 67 to 58. Now they move on to the Elite Eight with a conference foe, Duke. Will they get their get back after losing to Duke earlier in the season, actually on March 4th? So in the same month, they're facing the Duke team again. They won 76 to 64 with 29 from Burns Jr. Oh my gosh. The Wolfpack would reach the final four for the first time since 1983. The Cardiac Pack team, the team that won the national championship as a six seed that no one saw coming and fans are being reminded of this today. NC State is now tied for the lowest seed ever at 11 to reach the final four. And they also have a chance to make history if they can somehow win the game against Purdue, which a lot of people are hoping for because the lowest seed ever to make the national title game is eight and they would break the record. Are they gonna crack like many other 11 seeds that we've seen in the final four before? Are they going to repeat as the Cardiac Pack 2.0 like what they did in 1983? Is Purdue gonna get their get back from losing to 16th seeded FDU? Is Purdue gonna have too much pressure? Who knows? This is going to be absolutely crazy and I'm glad we're all along for the ride. Thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. If you enjoyed, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share. I've been Saturday Shenanigans and I'll see you guys soon.